GLPI is a powerful, free, and open source IT asset management and help desk platform. In this video, I'll show you how to install GLPI on Ubuntu or Debian. Quick, simple, and easy to follow. Before we begin, make sure the LAMP stack is fully installed on your system. Now we'll start by checking the status of Apache to ensure the web service is running properly. Make sure Apache's status is active. Next, we'll also check the status of MySQL or MariaDB to make sure the database service is running properly before installing GLPI. Next, make sure PHP is installed on your system. GLPI 11 requires 8 Philippine pesos and 20 centavos or higher, so make sure to check your current PHP version to confirm it meets the system requirements before continuing with the installation. After checking all the required services, next update your system's package repository to ensure all packages are up to date before proceeding. Now, install the required PHP extension packages for GLPI. These modules are essential for GLPI to run properly and with full functionality on your system. Next, Log in to your MySQL or MariaDB server to create a database for GLPI. We'll run the following commands step by step to create the database, create a user, set a password, and grant full privileges for GLPI. You can copy paste these commands, but make sure to replace the database name username and password with your own information before executing. After creating the database exit, my SQL or MariaDB so we can proceed to the next step. Next, Navigate to the directory where you want to install GLPI. Here, I'll move into the Apache root directory where GLPI will be stored and accessed through the browser. Next, go to the official GLPI GitHub repository to download the latest version. Choose the GLPI version you want to use. In this example, I'll select the latest version to install, ensuring all features and recent updates are included. Once you have the link, download the GLPI source code. The download process may take a little time, depending on your internet speed. Be patient and wait until the download is complete before proceeding to the next steps. Next, extract the GLPI file we just downloaded. After extracting, you'll get a folder named GLPI. You can rename this folder if you like. Next, we'll set ownership of the GLPI folder to the web server user. This ensures that Apache can read and write the necessary data for GLPI to function properly. After setting ownership, next set the access permissions for the GLPI folder. Now, navigate into the Apache configuration directory so we can create the configuration file for the GLPI website. We'll create a new configuration file for GLPI. This will define how Apache serves the website and connects to the GLPI directory. We'll add the sample content I've prepared into the configuration file. In the server name field, enter your domain, or if you don't have a domain, use the server's IP address. This will be the name used by browsers to access GLPI. 
In the alias line, you can customize how you want to access GLPI. If you want to use slash GLPI, keep or set the alias. If you want to access it directly via IP or domain, you can command this line alias. OK, save and exit the configuration file. Next, enable the configuration file you just created and activate the rewrite module for Apache. This ensures the GLPI website works correctly with friendly URLs and the configuration we set up. Finally, restart the Apache service to apply all the changes we've made. We've now completed the installation and server configuration of GLPI. Next, open your browser and go to the address you configured to finish the installation through the web interface. On the web interface, click Go to Install page to proceed to the GLPI installation page. Next, select the language you want to use for GLPI before starting the installation process. After selecting the language, click Continue to proceed. Next, on the installation screen, select Install to start installation process. Before proceeding, make sure all required PHP extension packages are fully installed. If any are missing, the system will notify you to install them. Here, enter the MySQL or MariaDB server address, usually localhost, and then input the database username and password we created earlier so GLPI can connect. Next, select the database name we created earlier for GLPI to use. The database has been successfully initialized. Click Continue to proceed installation. The system provides several default accounts with different privileges. Make sure to remember the admin account, which is GLPI, as you'll use it for the first login. Now, log in using the GLPI account provided by the system to access the GLPI administration interface. Congratulations! You have successfully logged in to the GLPI main interface. Here, you'll see a security warning. It's simple. Just change the default password of the accounts to secure your system. Now, you can start managing assets, tracking support tickets, and using all the powerful features of GLPI. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next videos.